it is different how to communicate with people. We need you, I need you to communicate with your generation and next generation because you are so creative to communicate with one another even though the gospel is the same but how we communicate is different. I have an iPhone and some people look at me and saying that you, have a pre you are a preacher and you have an iPhone? And I started to try to explain that, you know, this is a great tool for my ministry. That, of course, you know, it's a cell phone, so I call people. And even I'm visiting people in hospital, I'm able to communicate with others. And texting, Facebook, with my young generation, uh, my young members, I check their Facebook and find out who broke up and who got back and this and that. And having too much good time of partying, and yes, yes, and, and then I call them or just text or even send a Facebook message saying, hey, what's up? Do you want to talk? It's a great tool for ministry, but some people don't see it as a ministry. I have the Bible in, on this iPhone, 40 different languages, including 20 different English translations. I pull this out anywhere I need, and Bibles. This is a tool of ministry, but it's you who define what is ministry, how you use it, how to communicate with people. We need your generation desperately, desperately. And according to the Wesley Seminary, Luis Fella, a Luis Leadership Annual Report on Young Clergy, this year, under 35 years for elders, there's only 900 elders, including myself. And there's only 77 deacons. And there's only 400 local church young clergy. How do we reach out to young generation? How do we communicate? How do we talk about the gospel to the coming generations? We need you. You know, Friday I was in Minneapolis because I was going to the National Council of Churches, which I've been part of. All the different Christians come together, Orthodox and Presbyterians and Lutheran and different Christians come together to praise God, praise God together. I was there for a special occasion because my friend, Kathleen Roy, of whom I know, has been elected as the president-elect of the National Council of Churches just this week. She is young and she is making a history. And I wanna tell you, people will tell you they will need you in the future. We need you now. We need you now. <laughs> Don't wait, we need you right now. You are already doing ministry. We need you now. And the Samaritan woman in the scripture, we had a beautiful scripture reading and also a wonderful monologue. And it's the longest dialogue you can find with Jesus and one person in gospel. And as the monologue or scripture tells us, men, women don't talk in public. So the scripture itself is beyond imagination, beyond anyone's imagination. But Jesus was there to talk to her. Talk to her. Jesus was there. And in the Gospel of John, when you see something during daytime, that's a great sign. When you go back, read the book of John and see what's happening at night. When the writer of John tells you at night, at the beginning, that means something bad is going to happen. But when the writer says during day, that means something good is going to happen. The writer already knew the Samaritan woman was a great example even though 
all the mistakes she did, Jesus transformed her life. Jesus transformed her life. She realized he's the one, he's the Messiah. He's able to provide living water. But on top of that, she was willing to share. She was excited. She didn't just stop where she had a great experience. She went to her town and village and city. She told that experience to everyone. And many people believed her because of her story. Many of us had the experience similar to her. No one cared about you. Someone made you feel like nothing. But pretend like you are not there. You are not important, you feel like. Perhaps in your family, your school, or with your friends, or workplace, wherever you are, perhaps you felt you are ignored. You are not needed. You cannot find hope in darkness. Jesus is the hope. Jesus is the hope. He brings hope to us. He gave up his life for all of us. He loves you so much. Jesus is the hope. My guess is that you are here because Jesus touched your lives one way or another. That's why you are here. You have stories to share. That's why you are here. I want to share my story a little bit that I was born and raised in Tokyo, Japan. My dad was Zen Buddhist monk. Less than 1% of the Japanese population are Christian. So I didn't know anything about Christianity at all when I was growing up. When I was 10 years old, my parents got divorced. At that time, it was very unusual in Japan to have divorced parents. I didn't have youth group. I didn't have a pastor. I didn't even have a school counselor. My friends had no idea what I was going through. And I was miserable. 